is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got John Hoyle with me. You are the Executive Director of 211 Eastern Ontario. Welcome to FYI. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. We were just talking before we started taping. We were going down a bit of min memory lane uh, talking about my background as a social worker and, and having to have resources. And it's just amazing what we have come from from the 30 years ago that I started <laughs> to what we have now. So let's talk about what 211 is. Basically, I can put it very simply, when you don't know where to turn, call 211. So 211 is a 24 hour, 365 day a year uh, uh, service where anybody who is confused or not sure where they can get help, they can simply call 211. They can also do it by chat, by text, by email, but the great thing about it is it's a live person that's going to be talking to you and can talk to you about what your issues or issue or issues are and get you connected to the help that you need. And it's 24-7 and like you say, a live person answers all the time and bilingual too, correct. if I understand correctly. Uh, yes, yes, absolutely. All right. And I'm, I wrote down some of the questions uh, that, that, that people phone you and ask you about is like, you can't afford your utility bills. You can't afford presents for your child. You need a winter coat that sort of thing you need shelter you need uh, help from a uh, violent situation anything you can call 211 yes and what we do is we're not counselors because uh, our folks are uh, very very uh, rigorously trained nobody gets on to do live calls after till six weeks of training um, we look for people that are empathetic to take on these roles to answer the calls that are good at getting drawing people out because what we find is that when somebody calls and they think they have issue A, by the time the conversation is over and we've done our assessment of what the situation is by asking questions, that may be B or, or F, that is the problem. And often we make multiple referrals as well because they indicate one problem, for your example, can't pay my hydro bill. And then we start asking a few questions and say, uh, you know, how are you gonna doing on food? Well, the check isn't gonna carry me through i'm not gonna have money for the last couple of days of the month for food so then we can make a referral to a food bank and then they say yeah and my landlord's not happy because i'm you know a month behind in my rent and then we may i'm making a referral to a, a legal aid clinic so but it's it, it's across the the whole gamut and it, it isn't just for um, you know we we're, I, we focus on vulnerable people but vulnerable people uh, can have you know be living in poverty or they can be sitting in a condo as a senior whose spouse has died and they're by themselves and they have no network at all and they call us and say is there any way i can get connected to somebody so i have somebody to talk to of course those calls went up through the ceiling and in, in, in during covid but so we we serve everybody and i tell everybody about two and one and people get so tired of hearing from me and they say well i'll never use it i said no you may not use it but you may have an elderly neighbor or a cousin who's confused and the system is so complex you've got municipalities You've got provincial, you've got federal. And I always use an example in downtown Ottawa. When you punch into our, our map and say, uh, how many social services are available in a one kilometer area from the byword market? It's 812. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I don't care how, whether you're sophisticated or unsophisticated, it doesn't matter. It's really confusing. And rather than making, you know, you call one, no, that's not the right place. No, got to call it. Three calls later, you still haven't found what you need. So rather than do that, call 211, and we will figure out with you what you really need and then connect you to that, that particular uh, agency or program. Now, I see this service really um, alleviating a lot of pressure on 911 because I think people sometimes use 911 <clears throat> as they should, maybe uh, 211 instead. That's a great point because when 211 came along and it started in Ontario in 2005, here in Eastern Ontario in 2008, and that was one of the comments that 911 made was it was really great that 211 existed because they get those calls and they're not emergency calls. So often they can just, they just refer them over immediately uh, to us. They may even make a warm transfer where they actually connect up with us. They were connecting with so-and-so, you know, there's somebody here that has a particular problem that you may be able to help them with. So that that it is it, yes it is it gets the right calls to the right place and that's why we have little uh, fridge magnets and stuff that we give away that says here's what nine one one's for and here's what two and one is for uh, so that people can remember those distinctions. 
Now, when I started my social work uh, career 30 some years ago, I was given what, given what you and I call the blue Bible. And it was, yeah. you know, it was a pretty thick bi uh, book back yeah. then. And it had yeah. all the resources that we would need, you know, in the social work field. And 211, I can't imagine what your database must look like because uh, we were sort of comparing what our blue Bible is to what you do now. Well, it's, it, you know, the, actually it was uh, our Community Navigation East in Ontario, the organization I worked for that was formerly Community Information Center that actually did the Blue Book and uh, then distributed it throughout uh, Ottawa and then farther out as time went on. And the, the, now we have 7,700 record, we call it a record, which is a particular service or program in our database. So what the first thing that happens when one of our community navigators answers the call what we'll do is we'll ask uh, for a postal code uh, and it, uh, we don't keep it. We just use that to figure out where the person is. And then, and then we start from there and then we start asking them the questions and how we can help them and then figure out what the service is that they need. All right. All right. Now, uh, with, with your, your 211, people can call anytime for anything. And I, I actually, I, I would like to ask what your catchment base is, because I know you're working out of um, Ottawa right now, but you are Eastern Ontario. Yeah, it, and it doesn't, we happen to be in Ottawa, we could, we could be in Smith Falls. It doesn't, you know, just, it just where, where the office was. When they started, when they, United Way Canada got the license for 2 on one in 2005, and they had no money. So what they did in Ontario is they went to organizations that already existed in the information referral business because they had some infrastructure and then they built the database and so on. So basically uh, um, we cover from Belleville to Cornwall, uh, to Hawkesbury, to the North of Renfrew County. Uh, and uh, there's two parts of the operation. The part that everybody sees, of course, is calling two and one or texting, but the engine is the database. So I have data resource specialists and their job is to keep that database up to date. We are an accredited organization through a thing called the Alliance of Information Referral Systems, like a hospital accreditation. We have mm -hmm. 27 standards we must meet. One of those is that we 85% of our records must be updated at least once a year, which is obvious in a way, because if it isn't up to date and we're giving somebody the wrong phone number or the wrong address or the wrong information, we're not helping. So to keep the quality of our work at a very high level, my data resource specialists update those uh, uh, those 7,700 records at least once a year, often more than that. Uh, and they are also out there looking for a new program. So somebody, one of your listeners has started a new program with in a community. You should make sure that they're registered with us and we have a record because that's the way we can make referrals. We don't know you're uh, offering a program. We can't share it with people. So that's the, as I said, if that database without that, but we also, our community navigators aren't in the job for the pay, let me tell you they really believe in what they do and what they, so sometimes we won't find something in the database. So they'll Google, they'll make phone calls. We also advocate for people. So if we get a caller who's maybe a little shy, reluctant, not sure, we'll say, well, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. We can call the agency is what we think where you need the help. And we'll explain to them with you on the line, what, what, you know, what the issue is until they're comfortable, then we'll hand them off to have that conversation. Well, also, in circumstances, people say, well, they, they've got the number, but not too sure that they're, you know, they're really clear. We'll say, can we call you back in 24 hours and just see how you did? And if they give us permission, we will call back and say, how did it go? And if it didn't go well, it's okay, let's start again and we'll see how you can get you connected. So it's not, we, I get very upset when you say, well, you just give out phone numbers. Well, that is not what we do. It's much more than that. And, you and do that's follow-up. Yeah, yeah. follow-up and, 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 uh, and, and digging for information where we can. I mean, there are issues that won't surprise you at all, but things like shelter and, and people looking for housing, sometimes we can't find an answer. It's so frustrating, but as we all know, there is a housing crisis and a homelessness crisis, not only in urban areas, but in, in, in rural areas as well. And so it's something that, you know, we, we also gather a lot of information. Every call is tracked. So if we have somebody that asks about a food bank, after the call is over for about two minutes, the community navigator types in a little report saying, had a caller, it doesn't say who it is, of course, and says, called about a food bank, referred them to X food bank. So we do all that kind of thing so that we also put in, had a caller, couldn't meet the need. Mm. We couldn't find a solution. So we have every, the data is, blows my mind. 
we provide to United Ways, to municipalities, any organization that wants the information, because it's public information, what the met needs were for, say, the month of March, okay, what the unmet needs were, and you can see the gaps. So it's very useful from a government perspective, okay, where are the gaps? And of course, the big one of the biggest gaps that we see all the time is, as I said earlier, in the housing shelter area. Yeah, well, when you know when you know better, you do better. You know what the, that yeah, exactly. sort of data you, you you find out what you can do and and, and right. you do better right. for sure. Yeah. Now, the last two years, I can imagine the connection you must have had with public health because people must have been calling you about COVID nineteen and the pandemic, that right. sort of thing. Because the rules changed almost on a daily basis at times, you know. So your connection must well, have been amazing. Yes, absolutely, and and of course, um, our calls went up fifty percent. Now, we did get surge funding, so we were able to hire a few people, but unfortunately, all that funding is ending in, what, a week's time. So we're a little bit struggle for next year's budget, but uh, that's a story for another day. Mm -hmm. But the really interesting thing was that it was one of my biggest concerns was the mental health of my own staff, because not only on the community navigator with increase in calls and people getting desperate, no money, no job, you know, their, their work is not lost their job because of COVID and everything was shut down. Also, our data people, because normally we might handle 100, 150 changes, people calling us. I'm not going to say we moved. or uh, It was up to five, 600 changes a week. And there's only I only have two and a half people doing that work. And so they were stressed as well. So it was a, it was a real, it was a struggle. But I have to say, um, the team was amazing. Uh, you know, they stepped up to the plate. And I spent a lot of time working with them. We put in some mental health support for them so that they had a place to go and call if they were really burning out. And it was harder because we were all together. Now they're at home after a week mm -hmm. after, you know, March of uh, 2020, they were at home and we check in all the time, but it's not the same thing. We have a little quiet room so that if they have a really difficult call, you know, if you get somebody calling about, you know, they, their violence or so on and you're working through and we're getting them connected to the distress center or whatever it may be, those are hard calls. Mm -hmm. So we were right there so you could, be there and talk to them and they could go, you know, but when you're sitting in your, in your bedroom doing your work and where do you go when you had a difficult call? So we really worked on that because if we weren't strong, then we couldn't be strong for the public that we're helping. Oh, that, that is so great to hear you say, because we needed it. We need to take care of each other throughout this whole thing too. And, and right. uh, to do, uh, do a good job, you have to do self care and, and it's nice to have an employer that, that recognizes that as well too. I really like the, the fact that you said it's a story for another day because we need to have you come back here at FYI and, and talk more about 211. Now, uh, most often I say, how do people get a hold of you? But they would say 211. But <laughs> you, you're also, uh, 211 is also an email service? Uh, yeah, you can email, you can text, and you can chat. And if you just go to our website, they can find out how to, how to connect to do that. All right, all right. Well, we've got so much more to talk about. I need to have you come back and we'll do another interview here on FYI. I have some great stories to share with you when you have time. Oh, we'll have you back real soon. Thank you very okay. much, John Hoyle, the Executive Director of 211 Eastern Ontario. Thank you, John.